Hi. Hi, please introduce yourself. So, I'm uh, Olivier Kreid. I'm the multimedia lead here at Collabora. And uh, I can show you this is uh, one product that we've contributed to. It's a MediaTek-based Chromebook. And we've done uh, quite a bit of work around uh, bringing upstream Linux support for various IP blocks that are found in uh, ARM uh, is, it, is it one devices. of the latest, the Companio, or one of these chipsets? I think so, yeah. Uh, one of these latest MediaTek? Yes, one of these. And, uh, is it just a regular Chromebook? And this you can is a run, what Chromebook. kind of, uh, what is uh, Linux? You it's, can do the it, Linux? It's Chrome OS, right? Just Chrome OS. This is Chrome OS. This, this is off the shelf. We just went yeah. to a store and bought it. Uh, but we've been working on it because the ones we work on, obviously, we cannot bring. But. Can you explain what what is it part of it that that you work on? So we've done work on, for example, the codec um, hardware, but also other bits of hardware that we've upstreamed to the Linux kernel, and also we work on with Google on having these devices in the kernel CI project, which is a project to do continuous integration on the Linux kernel itself, so upstream. Running whenever someone submits a patch to the upstream Linux kernel, we, we, we build it, we run it on, on hundreds of devices, and we report to the maintainers what works and what doesn't, especially and what doesn't. All this work is useful for when people want to run Linux on these too, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, not just the not just the Chrome OS. Not just Chrome OS, right? Because a lot of what we do is we bring the drivers to upstream Linux, so you don't need a special kernel. You can just use the standard Linux kernel. Uh, which nice. is yeah, which is useful for someone like Google because they have eight-year support on these things, right? So they nice. want to upgrade the kernel. They just don't want to ship an eight-year-old kernel. What's happening behind you there on the screen? So, uh, well, uh, this is uh, our Lava Lab. So what we're showing that we're building different. Uh, we're showing uh, all these boards. Yeah. Okay. So we have continuous integration across all these boards. So the developer writes some code. And then our system will build it for all of these boards, create a system image, boot the board with the image, and uh, bring all of the results of all the tests that it runs into a UI where the developer can see. So it's easy if you have like a, a complex system that you might run on many generations of boards, many different types of hardware. Uh, also, the, a developer probably doesn't have like 10 boards on his desk to actually uh, have more confidence in what you built. The, the Lava has been developed for a few years, right? Yes. And and there's it's open and everybody can implement yes. it the way they want. And you have a special way to get it to the next level, or so we we actually contribute to the open source projects directly. So it's not like we have our, our own special flavor. We're actually part of the community. But one of the services we have is that we host a Lava Lab where we can take people's devices, put them there, and then have lab, uh, part of both kernel CI and Mesa CI. Yeah, all right. What else can we film here at the booth? So the next demo, I will, my coworker here, Marcus, right. will show it. I can show it, yes. Yes, it's an AI demo. What's the latest happening with the pan frost? So what are you doing here? What we show here is basically a machine learning demo that runs on a complete open source deck, uh, like operation system. But the important part here is that we use like an open source graphics driver. And what this demo is about is basically a video compression focused on web video conferencing. So basically, at the beginning of the call, we take like one image of the of the sender and send it over to the receiving site. And then, following up, we just extract key points for every image, and we use these key points with the first image that we extracted to reconstruct the face. And that way, we are actually able to reduce the bandwidth 10 times in comparison to H.264, which is, makes sense because like we just transfer like the key points um, for every image instead of like the whole like video stream. Is this working or is just a prototype? This is basically, I mean. More like a prototype than like a full featured product, but it would be easy to just take it and integrate it into like an existing video conferencing software. Because uh, last three years, I don't know what happened. There was something weird where people had to stay at home and everything, and they were doing video exactly. chats. Exactly. Exactly. So there's been a lot of talk of uh, I mean, there's been trillions of petabytes of 
of video conferencing bandwidth out there. And yeah, as save, I said, like this complete of it. this complete demo is already like open source. Because you can just download it, flash it to your like embedded board or like your PC, and just use it. And like the next step would be to actually integrate it into like an existing video conferencing software like Zoom or like Microsoft Teams. You could potentially have um, rock chip powered uh, 4K yes. webcam, and if the other guy also has it, or even if they don't, or I don't know, the software has it, they then suddenly it, they can see you 4K image with 10 times less bitrate. Yes, up to 10 times uh, lower bandwidth. So you could do 4K video conferencing with like one megabit. Um, Yes, you could. Um, you probably need like a little bit more capable hardware because like this one is like very resource constrained. Um, but it would be possible to run like in 4K. Yes. I did a video with uh, Nvidia once. They talked about some um, all kinds of optimizations there. They were thinking of doing. I forgot what it's called, but uh, um, and but I guess. You like to do everything in the open source, so everybody can use it. Yes, the, the benefit is how soon are people going to use this in products or? Um, we hope pretty soon. Um, as I said, like the next step would be to actually integrate it. But since this is open source, we can actually optimize every single bit. Uh, as I said, it runs like on an open source graphics driver, which actually allows us to optimize the whole machine learning pipeline um, to run in real time, and also like support like 4K, for example, nice. which is like often not possible even on like NVIDIA hardware, like the NVIDIA Jets. How good is the pan frost? Is um, it fully it's working, a everything is perfect? It's like or is this really, really good and works like out of the box. Really good out of the box? Yes. All the Mali yes. GPUs? Not no all the Mali GPUs. Um, there are like a couple, there are like more support than others, but. Um, the newest ones, they get great pan frost, or is the older ones that have problems? Or? Um, it's more like the, the more older like chips are like a little bit more supported um, and are more optimized, I would say. Like, it's always like a combination of software and hardware, right? As the latest one, they, I think they call them Immortalis, the GPU, and. It'll take a while before Penfrost is ready yes. for that? Yes, yes. It will take a while before like Penfrost is ready for this, yes. So ARM hasn't open sourced the GPU driver yet? No. They don't want? Um, I don't know if I can share too much about this. Okay. <laughs> um, there are definitely like, discussions in this direction. Cool. Awesome. Uh, what ha what's happening behind you? What, what else we can talk about here? Um, maybe we can yeah. switch to them because... Yeah. Oh, do you want to give like an M? Yeah. All right. Uh, perhaps I'll yeah. at first and see you can ask them to, uh, if you can just try to go through. All right. Hi. Please Hello. Uh, my name is Laurent Panchard. I'm the CEO of IDs on Board. Uh, we are a Linux consulting company specialized in multimedia and camera support. So what does the ideas do on, on board? On which board? Lots of boards, actually. So our goal is to enable camera support for all of our customers. Uh, we make your cameras work for you. So anyone who needs to capture images uh, to create a product, uh, we enable that. Uh, we don't care about the, uh, the end user applications, so we support customers in the automotive market, industrial markets, medical markets, uh, anywhere where you, where you need to support cameras, we can be there. So we work with SOC vendors. Um, <coughs> we are supporting both from uh, an SOC from Rockchi, from NXP, from ST, TI, Xilinx, all across the board. And we also work with OEMs who integrate those products and those SOC in their own products uh, to enable them to use them uh, <coughs> as efficiently as possible. Uh, when there's an SOC and it has support for cameras and stuff, isn't it just there or what else do you need to do to make it great? Uh, unfortunately, many things, because usually vendors will try to BSP with a custom solution. They will have a camera stack that is vendor specific. So for OEMs, switching from a vendor, from a vendor to another one is very difficult. Or integrating just support for uh, another camera sensor on the same SOC is very difficult. 
you need to go through a whole tuning process that involves closed source tools, that involves usually working with the selected key partners from the vendors that can be a long and costly process. So we want to create, and we are creating a completely open ecosystem with an open source camera stack uh, <coughs> that solves those problems. We focus on interoperability between different SOCs and different camera sensors, so we can make any camera sensor work on any platform, and we also work on creating tuning tools to enable our customers to do the tuning themselves at a cheaper cost and leveraging all the knowledge they have in house. Just behind, I saw Libre Computer. Are you working with these guys? You, uh, is, that, is that your partners and all that? Or? So we are we are partners of Collabora. They're hosting uh, us on their booth. Uh, and uh, Libre Computer is indeed a company that Colabra is working with. We, we have a working camera solution on some of the Libre Computer boards. Um, uh, and we, we partner with uh, lots of uh, SBC vendors. And It's nice when I see the AI just yes. makes the, the video codex amazing. Are you also part of doing yeah, that? That's a Colabra project. That's a really cool one. Uh, that's actually a demo that you can see here. Yeah, yeah so it's right there. With the yes, it's de de detecting the face. Uh, that's that's yeah, the same one. Right. So you do you do have face detection, and it's reconstructing the face and sending just the face over the network, lowering the bandwidth. So they have created this AI demo, and we have worked with them to replace the USB webcam that they were using with uh, a RAW sensor. So now you can use the same demo on any kind of SOC with any kind of RAW sensor. With, when there's a, can you? Describe one of the really cool SOCs that are great, but then the the camera, the imaging chip is kind of like separate all the time, right? And you have they have to talk with the SOC, and there's uh, what's the language? There are, what's happening? there are SOCs that lack camera support inside, so you have to use an external ISP. That's usually a chip that will be between your raw camera sensor and your SOC. Uh, that makes it more costly to integrate a full solution. Uh, but we do support some of them. We have worked, uh, for instance, with uh, OnSummy, with some of the external SOCs and uh, developing drivers for that. Um, so those are solutions that we support as well. So depending on the type of SOC you use, whether it integrates an ISP or uses an external ISP, that is something that we can work with. Uh, many of the cool ones have it integrated directly. I wouldn't say necessarily the cool ones. I mean, there are lots of interesting SOCs that don't necessarily focus on camera support. They may have lots of other interesting features. Uh, but without an integrated ISP. Uh, but otherwise, yes, we, uh, we're more interested in the ones that do integrate an ISP because that gives usually uh, a more integrated user experience. Nice. Is this also stuff yes. here? Yeah, so those are samples of, uh, of board and system that we support, just a small subset. What we, are you looking at here? So we do have the, the Debix board is based on an NXP IMX 8M Plus. That's the, the first SOC actually in the NXP product line that integrates an ISP. It was a bit of a game changer for them. Uh, but we have camera modules from Articam, OKDU, okay Raspberry Pi. This is a cool device, actually. So this is a Raspberry Pi Zero behind the hood with, uh, with a camera sensor from Raspberry Pi as well, the latest camera module. And it's actually uh, used as a USB webcam. So it runs Linux inside, uh, full open source report. In there. And you, yes, in there. That's, that's the same one you have here. There. So that's the Raspberry Pi Zero inside. You run Linux on that, you run lip, lip camera on that, and you connect it through USB to your computer, and it's recognized as a webcam. Nice. Uh, do you have some, what's the best platform if I want to do a 4K uh, video conferencing? What should I use? So if you go for higher resolutions and, and higher performance, um, we are looking at the moment at new SOCs such as uh, the ROC5 board, for instance, distributed by OKDU, that's, uh, that's based on a new ROC chip uh, SOC that's very interesting from a kind of point of view. That's, we, we're just starting development on that, so that's not something we fully support yet. Um, but for, for the existing supported platform, the IMX 8M Plus is actually an interesting one. It's very versatile. I wouldn't say that's not necessarily the best one for video conferencing as such, but for lots of industrial use cases, including higher resolutions, uh, we, can, we can support lots of, lots, of, lots of applications on that. What's cool about the embedded world, when you support a platform very well, it's going to stay for decades. It's going to stay for years and years. It's going to be useful for maybe potentially millions of products. Yes, it does. And that, that's also something where I think we have an added value. If you, if you look over here, this is uh, a tablet running uh, or developed by Google. That's a Chrome OS product. 
<laughs> and they offer a seven years support uh, and, and software updates on all the Chrome OS, uh, Chrome OS uh, devices. This one is reaching end of life very soon. And because we have an open source camera stack on that, it means that users can even extend their lifetime beyond that. So you can use mainline, mainline Linux kernel, you can use uh, lead camera, you can use open source software, and you have support even beyond what the vendor would provide. Seven years is already quite long in that kind of market, so that's pretty super from Chrome OS, but you can even go longer than that because of the open source ecosystem. Nice, that means uh, these Chromebooks get a bunch of updates somehow. Yes, yes. Well, right. Seven years from Google, and after that, depending on what the users want. Cool, that's awesome. Okay. So that's a cool book here, lots of uh, action happening. Where, where are you based? I'm uh, based in Finland, personally, originally from Belgium, uh, but based in Helsinki. But here, they collaborate a lot of French guys, or...? Uh, French, they have a big office in Montreal, so certainly French-speaking, but not just. Um, in Ideas on Board, we have seven people, we're distributing over already five uh, different countries. Uh, Colorado is much bigger, with 140, around 140 developers, so they definitely span the whole globe. And working in the open source, it's possible to make money. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we're selling not out of work. We have lots of requests for, from customers. We do not sell our software, indeed, uh, but we uh, we sell consulting services. We work with SLC vendors to enable their products in this whole ecosystem, and we also work with OEMs who want to integrate them uh, later in, in in the product. So any kind of support they need. Um, that's 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 where we come, um, and all the the camera stack, all the kind of drivers. That is that's indeed released as open source, uh, so everybody can benefit from that. But the other way around, we do benefit from the work of other developers. So that's also how we can be competitive. Is it possible that uh, some somebody will make really cool devices? I don't know how what kind of uh, sensor size is here, but could it, could you have like a, a one inch sensor, micro four thirds, uh, APS-C? Have, yes. I just have amazing video conference uh, or something like that. Yes, absolutely. You could go for really, really large sensors. Obviously, if we're looking, if, if we're looking at the uh, at extremes, there sensors that have resolutions at I don't know 400 megapixels, for instance, you will need custom hardware to uh, <coughs> to go with that because it's such a niche use case that you want you will not find a of the shelf SSC that will offer all the, all the features that you need. But apart from that, you can go high resolution. You can go. I mean, this this one is relatively large, but you can certainly go larger than that. Uh, and you support it? Yes, we can. We can definitely support. It. You can work with anything people want. Yes. The the, the, the biggest problem we have actually, uh, when it comes to an interoperability point of view, is connecting the sensor to the hardware. There's no standardization when it comes to those connections. All those ribbon cables that you see, they have different pinouts, different number of pins. And so that limits our customers when they want to connect a camera that has that's not meant to be connected to a board. So there's always some adaptation that you have to do. Uh, so having standardization in that field would be great. Uh, that's hindering development a little bit. But from a software point of view, uh, we can really support anything. Uh, as long as we can establish a relationship with, uh, with the vendors and get documentation to be able to de develop drivers, uh, we can certainly support them. Yes. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome, thank you.